What's up guys? So if you clicked on this video, I'm pretty sure you was just like me and trying to figure out whether you should get the RF 70-200 2.8 or whether you should get the RF 70-200 F4, which is this lens right here. I had the 70-200 F4 for almost a year now and I want to give you my real life experience with the lens. I won't make this video overly technical, there's already plenty of videos like that on YouTube, but like I said before, I do want to go over some of these pros and cons of this lens just to let you know if this lens is best for you. And just a heads up, it's, it's very few cons about this lens. This thing is amazing. The first pro to this lens, and honestly, the number one reason why I did get this lens is because of the price. So this lens is coming in at $1,600, which is way cheaper than the 2.8 version of the lens, which is around $2,800 right now, which is which actually costs more than a Canon R6 at the moment. So... The price made up about 70% of the reason why I did decide to go with this lens over the 2.8 version of it. The second pro is that this lens is basically the same as the 2.8 version, but it just doesn't stop down to 2.8 for obvious reasons, and that being that this is, you know, a F4 lens. But both lenses do have the same build quality uh, because they are both L-series lenses, which is actually a really important thing, and I'll explain why in just a moment. One thing that was on my mind before buying the F4 is whether or not I was going to get the same weather ceiling or just overall durability as a 2.8 version. And if I could leave you one thing to keep in mind after watching this video, it'd be that if you buy any of the L-series lenses, just know that you are getting good quality because they all are built for quality and performance. These are the professional lens from Canon. So no matter which one you get, you should be good with that lens. So the third pro about this lens is that it does come with three different stabilizer modes. This is actually pretty common for any 70 to 200 to be honest with you, but if you never used one before, it is pretty dope to have. And for myself, I just love how good it works with my camera, with the R5 just being stabilized the way it is. And in this lens, having those uh, dynamic stabilization modes is really, it's really good. So this lens does have three stabilizer modes. The first one being just, it just stabilizes all the directions basically, which is normally where I keep it 80% of the time. I mean, it's pretty good for anything you can throw at it. But if you take pictures of cars moving, then mode two is definitely where it's at. It's really good at like stabilizing pan movement. So if you're trying to catch cars zip past, then I mean, this is really good Just put on mode two. I'm gonna just post some pictures of some panning shots so you can actually get a feel for what I mean. All right, so number four, the fourth pro is the focal length. The focal length that this lens cover is a focal length that I didn't really think I needed until I actually got the lens in. I just find myself always having to bring this lens no matter uh, what photo shoot I'm on, it's just always coming with me. The images that this thing can produce and then with that compression in the background is, I mean, if you never tried the 70 to 200, you definitely need to try it, it's really dope. So I recently did a engagement photo shoot and you know, from like 90% of the time I was using the 70 to 200 F4 and I'm gonna just drop some of those pictures just so you guys can see what type of quality that this lens produced. I mean, this lens is, like I said before, it's amazing. If you never tried the 70 to 200 focal length, you definitely should. It's really good at pretty much anything you can throw at it. Take some amazing portraits. Uh, it can take sport pictures. I mean, just like I said, the, it's endless possibilities you can do if you got a lens like this. All right, so the fifth and the last pro I'm gonna have on this video is going to be the autofocus. The autofocus on this lens is really dope. Um, I mean, generally all the RF lenses have really good autofocus, but I have noticed that this one has a really, really good autofocus. Um, when I was doing those portrait shots, you're just able to catch the eye really it was really snappy basically so if you guys want to try this lens out you definitely should um i would say definitely rent it out before buying it just to make sure that this is the lens that fits you best but like i said this lens is way more pros than five this is you know all i can have in one video so now on to the con so the first con to this lens and this is actually a pretty serious con is you cannot add the teleconverter that Canon make for the RF lenses to this lens. And if I don't, I think on the last generation, you actually could have added. So I kind of don't like that, you know, they changed it up for the new RF lenses because it would have been real dope to just be able to get uh, 140 to 400 focal length out of this thing. Cause then this would have been a insane um, value for, you know, what you're paying type of lens basically. But you know, it is what it is. So 
and the second con is the fact that it is a 2.8 and again like i said i personally do not care that it's a 2.8 but if you are a type of person that's probably taking weddings or doing more like indoor sports then you might want to push it to 2.8 so you are going to have to cough up the extra money to get to 2.8 because again like i said this one only goes down to f4 and it is situations where you know you might find yourself wanting a little more exposure or depth of field but like i said in my whole experience of having this lens for a year that's a rare case this thing usually can hold it hold its own so i wouldn't really judge it too harshly on that but like i said that's why i say you should definitely rent the gear out first just to make sure that this lens is what you have in mind basically but overall like i was saying you cannot go wrong with this lens i personally love this lens it's one of my favorite lens in my kit like i said before when i'm going on photo shoots no matter what the occasion is i'm always going to bring a 70 to 200 because the image that come out of this thing is very unique that compression in the background is very addicting just when you like I said, if you never shot with 70 to 200, definitely go shoot with a 70 to 200. You will see exactly what I mean when I say the compression on these things are pretty dope. And I know with videos like this that, you know, when people showing off gear and stuff like that and just kind of giving their thoughts on it. Um, one thing to always keep in mind is that um, gear, I'm not going to say gear isn't important, but you do always want to make sure that you do focus on the art craft itself of uh, photography um and then just slowly build up your gear as you you know you can you have the needs to do it so um that's gonna be the end of this video if you like the video hit that like button if you did not like the video then just don't press the dislike button but anyway guys i will see you guys next time Peace.